Okay, so a reminder, we're in section 2.7 and we are looking at three-dimensional systems. Now, now, it's very, very important, it's crucial, it's critical that because we're working in three dimensions, it's not so easy to work with scalar values anymore, like we did in the section on two dimensions. So, in general, if you've got a force, right, if you've got a force there and a force there, right, F1 and F2, if you are in two dimensions, it's, it is a lot easier to work with just the magnitude and the angle, right? Say now you've got the angle there and you've got the angle there, and you can work with just the magnitudes and the angles. When it comes to three-dimensional systems, this is very difficult to do, okay? So the, the, the best way is for us to, in a sense, these are my words, to convert a force into vector form. It is, it is, it is best to convert everything into vector form and use, use them in vector form. What do we mean by vector form? We mean it's in terms of I, J's and K's. Okay, so let's look at two ways that we can convert a force into a vector. So say now, this force, you, you know, you can see that it's pointing in that direction. Say now it has a, a, a value of 50 Newton. But that's only a magnitude. We don't have any directional information. We want to convert this force which has a certain magnitude, we want to convert it into a vector which has i's, j's and k's. So how do we do that? Well, one way is to find any two points that are along the line of action of that force. Right? And then to calculate the unit vector pointing in that same direction. So remember, a unit vector is simply a vector divided by the magnitude of that vector. So again, a unit vector, I'm just going to use my own words for intuition, is the vector divided by the magnitude of that vector. So it could be a vector, let's call it A, divided by the magnitude of A. And this might look like this, it might look like 2i plus 3j minus 4k. That's what the vector might look like. And then divide by 2 squared plus 3 squared plus minus 4 squared square root. Right? And so that is, that is the way that we calculate this. So, so how are we going to calculate a unit vector with this information? Well, we can use a position vector divided by the magnitude of the position vector. Remember, a position vector is simply how do I move from this point to this point in space? How far in the x? How far in the y? How far in the z must I walk from there to get to there, right, in meters? That's a position vector. And the way that we calculate the position vector is by saying final position minus initial position in the x, final minus initial in the y, final minus initial in the z. So this is what's happening here, x2 minus x1. You see, you first find the coordinates for b, x2, y, x2, y2, z2, that's the coordinates for b, and you find the coordinates for a, x1, y1, z1, and you say this vector, this position vector AB is x2 minus x1, right? I plus y2 minus y1, j plus z2 minus z1, k. This gives me a position vector pointing from A to B. But I need to convert that into a unit vector. So I need to divide it by its magnitude, which is this component squared 
plus that component squared plus that component squared square root. So this is effectively our unit vector. It's the vector divided by the magnitude of the vector. Okay. So again, if I've if I've got the magnitude, but I I've got two points that are on the line of action of the force, then I can use this method. Okay, I think that's good. I'll do part B in the next one.